In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the derivative of a fraction. But before we do that, we need to go over some basic rules, such as the power rule. The derivative of a variable raised to a constant, x is the variable, n is the constant, is going to be n times x raised to the n minus 1. So let me give you some examples. Let's say if we want to find the derivative of x squared, it's going to be 2x and then subtract this by 1, so 2x to the first power. If we want to take the derivative of x cubed, it's going to be 3x to the second power. Pretty much you move the exponent to the front and then subtract it by 1. Likewise, if we want to find the derivative of x to the fourth power is 4x cubed. Now, what if we want to find the derivative of, let's say, 8x to the ninth power? What you could do is move the constants to the front. This is equivalent to saying 8 times the derivative of x to the ninth power. And then using the power rule, the derivative of x to the ninth power will be 9x to the 8. And then you could multiply the 8 and the 9. So 8 times 9 is 72. So that's the answer for this example. So let's say if we want to find the derivative of 5x to the 6, it's going to be 5 times the derivative of x to the 6th power, which is 6x to the 5th power. And we're going to get 30x to the 5th. Now, what if we want to find the derivative of, let's say, 7x? What's the answer for that one? Well, keep in mind, this is x to the first power. So it's going to be 7 times the derivative of x to the first power, which is 1x to the 0 power. And anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So the answer is just 7. So the derivative of 5x is simply 5. The derivative of negative 4x is simply negative 4 following that same pattern. Now the last thing you need to be familiar with is that the derivative of a constant is 0. So the derivative of, let's say, negative 6, that's going to be 0. So now that we had a quick review of some of the basic stuff, let's go over finding the derivative of a fraction. So let's say we want to find the derivative of x over 9. How can we do this? Well, it helps if you rewrite the fraction. This is the same as the 9 is a constant. So you could say this is the same as 1 over 9 times the derivative of x. Because 1 over 9 times x is x over 9. And the derivative of x is simply 1. Keep in mind, the derivative of 5x is 5, 2x is 2, 1x is 1. So the answer for this example it's simply 1 over 9. Now what about this one? What is the derivative of 4x over 7? So this is the same as 4 over 7 times the derivative of x. So it's just 4 over 7 times 1 or simply 4 over 7. So that's what you can do if x is in the numerator. But what if x is in the denominator of the fraction? Let's say we have the derivative of 8 over x. Well, in this case, the situation is different. If you see this, what you need to do is you need to rewrite the expression. You need to move the x to the top of the fraction. So this is the same as the derivative of 8 times x raised to the minus 1. And now we could use the power rule. We can move the exponent to the front. And so it becomes 8 times negative 1, or negative 8, and then x, and then subtract this by 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So this is the answer, but we want to get rid of the negative exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to move x back to the bottom. And the negative exponent is going to become positive. So we're going to get negative 8 over x squared. 
So this is the final answer for this example. Let's try a similar example. Let's find the derivative of 7 over x squared. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try that problem. So let's begin by rewriting the expression. So this is equivalent to saying the derivative of 7 times x to the minus 2. And now we could use the power rule. So it's going to be 7 times the derivative of this thing. The derivative of x to the minus 2 is negative 2x. And then if you subtract negative 2 by 1, you're going to get negative 3. Next, we can multiply 7 and negative 2. That's negative 14. And then we're going to move the negative 3 to the bottom. So the answer is going to be negative 14 over x cubed. Here's another one. Let's find the derivative of 8 over x to the third power. So once again, let's rewrite the expression. So this is the same as finding the, the derivative of 8x to the minus 3. Now the derivative of x to the minus 3 is going to be negative 3 times x raised to the negative 4. And then 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. Now moving the x variable to the bottom, this is going to give us the final answer, negative 24 over x to the fourth power. Now, what about this problem? What is the derivative of, let's say, the square root of x over 5? So what would you do if you have a square root in the numerator of a fraction? Well, first, we want to rewrite the expression. This is the same as the derivative of 1 over 5 times the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. So that's going to be 1 over 5 times the derivative of x to the 1 half. Now let's use the power rule. First, we're going to move this to the front. And then we're going to subtract 1 half by 1. So 1 half minus 1 we could change the negative 1 to 2 over 2 to get common denominators. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And now we can multiply 1 over 5 by 1 over 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. So we're going to get 1 over 10 x to the minus 1 half, which you can write that as x to the negative 1 half over 10. You could just multiply those two together. Now we want to get rid of the negative exponent. To do that, we need to move the variable x to the bottom. So our answer is 1 over 10 x to the 1 half. Now even though this is the correct answer, it's not in its most simplified form because we need to convert it back to its radical form. Keep in mind, x to the 1 half is equivalent to the square root of x. So we can write our final answer as 1 over 10 square root of x. Now you can rationalize this answer, but I'm going to leave it like this. Now let's work on a similar but slightly different problem. So in this example, we're going to find the derivative of 7 divided by the square root of x. Feel free to take a minute to try that problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the problem. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. Next, we need to move the x variable to the top before we can use the product rule. I mean, not the product rule, but the power rule. So we have the derivative of 7 times x to the negative 1 half. So now we're going to move the negative 1 half to the front and then subtract negative 1 half by 1. Let's change negative 1 to negative 2 over 2, just like we did before. And now negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 over 2. Now let's see if we can combine this answer into a single fraction. The 7 and the negative sign are on top of the fraction. The 2 is on the bottom. 
And since this fraction is multiplied by x, it's automatically going to put the x on top. Now the next thing we need to do is get rid of the negative exponent by moving the x variable back to the bottom. So this is what we now have. Next, what we can do is get rid of, we can convert this back into its radical form. But it's important to understand that x to the 3 half can be rewritten as x to the 1 half times x to the first power because a half plus 1 is 3 halves or 0.5 plus 1 is 3 over 2 which is 1.5 and x to the 1 half is equal to the square root of x so we can replace x to the 3 half with x root x so we can write the final answer as negative 7 2 x times the square root of x. So that's it for this problem. Now let's work on one more problem. Go ahead and find the derivative of this fraction. 5 plus 3x divided by x squared plus 7. Now for problems like this, you need to use something called the quotient rule. And here's the formula for that. The derivative of a fraction f over g, that's going to be equal to g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. Some books would use the variables u and v. So in this case, we need to define what f and what g is. So f is the stuff on the numerator, that's 5 plus 3x f prime is the derivative of that expression. The derivative of a constant is 0, and the derivative of 3x is just 3. Now g is the function on the bottom. It's the stuff in the denominator of the fraction. To find g prime, we need to find the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and the derivative of 7 is 0. So now we just got to plug everything in to this formula. So it's g, which is x squared plus 7, times f prime, which is 3, minus f, which is 5 plus 3x, times g prime, which is 2x, divided by g squared. So that's x squared plus 7 squared. So at this point, we can get rid of this information. And now we just got to simplify this expression. So let's distribute the 3. So first, we're going to have 3x squared, and then 3 times 7 is 21. Next, we're going to have 2x times 5, which is 10x, but we have a negative sign in front of that, so that's going to be negative 10x. And then 2x times 3x, that's 6x squared, and we still got the negative sign, so it's a negative 6x squared. It's always good just to double check your work to make sure that everything was done correctly. Now, the part on the bottom, I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm not going to foil it. At this point, all we can do right now is combine like terms. Chances are we probably won't be able to factor it. But it's good to check to see if you could factor it. But right now I have negative 3x squared minus 10x plus 21 divided by x squared plus 7 squared. So just to check to see if we can factor it, if we multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term, that's going to be 63 or negative 63 rather. And we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 63, but add to negative 10. I mean, 9 and 7 multiplies to 63, but it's not going to add to 10. And then you have 21 and 3. That's definitely not going to add to 10. And uh, that's about it. So this expression is not factorable which means we can leave our answer like this. This is going to be the final answer for this problem. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to find the derivative of a fraction.